gospel shows us how God makes people right with himself. It begins and ends with faith. The scripture says those who are right with God will live by trusting in him. Without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. So what is faith? Faith is the confident assurance that what we hope for is going to happen and to be certain of things we do not yet see. All right, well, good morning and welcome to this first week of a brand new series called Extraordinary Faith. Hey, over the next uh, six weeks, I want to invite you to join me on a journey of really stretching your faith, a journey where your faith will be challenged and you will also be given very practical ways in how you can grow in your faith. Now, as we start this six-week series, here is a very quick disclaimer. Growth is sometimes uncomfortable, but the result of growth is always blessing, maturity, answered prayer, and a long list of other amazing, wonderful things from the Lord. Now look, that list is pretty awesome, right? My guess is that every person in this room would love to have blessings and maturity and answered prayers present in their life. But you see, the reality is that growing in your faith is actually pretty hard to do. It's not easy work. And many times you see people turn away from a life of extraordinary faith in favor of something easier or even less time consuming. So on this Mother's Day weekend, I want to discuss the importance of making time to grow in your faith. Now look, I'm sure most mothers would agree that there is never enough time to get everything done and a mother's work is never done. From packing lunches, folding laundry, bandaging bruises, helping with homework, the list goes on and on and on. A mother's day is never done. But here's the problem. With that incredibly long list of to-dos every single day, many moms put their children, their husband, and their jobs before their own soul. So I want to ask all the moms here today a very pointed series of questions. Are you tired? Are you barely making it through each day? How are you honestly doing? How's your soul? Are you happy and content? Or do you find yourself depleted and exhausted? You see, in the chaos of motherhood, a mom must always remember the importance of growing deeper in her faith. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. And look, the, the message today, just so you know, it's not just for moms. This message applies to every single person here. Every person here needs at some point, and hopefully all the time, to evaluate the health of your soul. But why? Why is it important to evaluate the health of your soul? Because your soul is eternal. Your soul is the core of who you are. Your soul is spiritual. Your soul is your connection to the creator of this universe. And look, the, the only way to grow your soul is to grow deeper in your faith in God. Moms, let me ask you another question. What kind of legacy do you want to leave for your children? Look, if you could only be remembered for one thing, what would it be? What do you want to be remembered for? That you were an amazing cook? Maybe you want to be remembered that you were one of the hardest working women in the world? Maybe you want to be remembered for how you balance both your, your job at work and your job at home. Maybe you want to be known as the best who ever did laundry. Maybe you want to be known or remembered as the best who is able to juggle a hundred things at once. Moms, how do you want to be remembered? What do you want your greatest earthly achievement to be? In the book of Matthew, we see how God defines greatness. He defines it very simply. Here's what God says. He says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. You see, at the end of the day, the greatest legacy, moms, that you can leave your children and your loved ones 
is that you were a person that loved God with all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your mind. You were a person that cared about growing deeper in your faith and exhibiting all of the qualities of a person that was totally and absolutely in love with the Lord. You see, that is what extraordinary faith is all about. That's what extraordinary faith looks like. A person completely devoted to Jesus Christ. So this morning, I want to actually look at two separate angles of faith. One is kind of negative. So one is what happens when you don't grow deeper in your faith. And then the second angle we're going to look at is more positive. What happens when you do grow in your faith? So first, what is the result of not growing in your faith? What happens when you stop growing? Well, God gives us kind of numerous examples throughout his word, but there's a pretty amazing one in the book of Jeremiah. In Jeremiah 17, 5 through 6, here's what it says in regards to what will happen to you if you stop growing in your faith. Cursed are those who put their trust in mere humans, who rely on human strength and turn their hearts away from the Lord. They are like stunted shrubs in the desert with no hope for the future. They will live in the barren wilderness in an uninhabited, salty land. Hey, happy Mother's Day, everyone. (laughs) What a great verse. (laughs) Hey, I promise you the message gets better than that one verse. Look, it's so important that we understand the consequences of not growing in our faith. And here in Jeremiah, we learn about those devastating consequences. You see, this verse is saying that for those people that turn their hearts away from the Lord, those people will have no hope and life will constantly be hard and grueling and exhausting. Every day will be more challenging than the day before And God's word says that you will lose all hope. See, this verse is saying that when you stop growing in your faith, you become like like a stunted shrub in the desert where your roots are actually not long enough to sink into the ground to get the nourishment needed for growth. And without nourishment, the Bible says you're going to be hopeless. When I don't grow deeper in my faith, I wonder aimlessly without hope. But why? Why do I wonder aimlessly without hope? Number one, it's because I put other things before God. Look, God's word's very clear that life away from his presence is dark and meaningless. You see, when the chores, the diapers, the cooking, the cleaning, the homework, the bills, the laundry, and the job trumps your time with God, then the Bible's very clear. You will wonder aimlessly without hope. When everything on your to-do list comes before God, you will absolutely find yourself exhausted and spiritually malnourished. So what's the remedy, right? There's got to be a remedy for this. What are you supposed to do? Well, God God makes it very clear. Look at what he says in Proverbs 3, 6. In everything, in everything you do, put God first, and he will direct you and crown your efforts with success. You see, true success and true greatness start with putting God first. Look, if you want to be an amazing mother, you're going to have to make time for God. Fathers, if you want to be an amazing father, you're going to need to learn how to make time for God. If you want to be an amazing son, daughter, student, boyfriend, girlfriend, or grandparent, you have to make time for God. The Bible's clear. It says success starts with putting God first. Look, maybe you're here today, and maybe even as as we've started this message here, maybe you're kind of starting to shake your head a little bit, and you're identifying with some of these things I'm talking about. Look, maybe, maybe, you're, a, maybe you're a single mom here today, and maybe you're trying to, to raise your kids, you're trying to hold down a job, and maybe you have walked into this room today, and you are absolutely exhausted. You're tired. You're worn out. You're at the end of your rope. Now, sure, today, it's Mother's Day. Today's going to be a great day. The kids got you some flowers and a card. They're going to be on their best behavior because it's Mother's Day, and you told them if they weren't on their best behavior, you'd kill them, and they know that you would actually kill them. It's going to be a great day today. Great day today. 
But the reality is that tomorrow isn't Mother's Day, and that same exhausting cycle is going to begin again tomorrow, and it's going to be there the day after, and it's probably going to be there the day after. The reality is you need Jesus. You absolutely need Jesus. You cannot rely on your own strength. You need to be able to hear that still, small voice of Jesus. And friends, that's only going to happen if you learn to put God first in your heart and in your schedule. In everything you do, put God first, and he will direct you and crown your efforts with success. Look, if if you were tired of wandering aimlessly without hope, then stop putting everything before God. Make time for God. Allow him to to grow the roots of your soul. Allow him to, to grow the roots of your faith deeper into him. John 15, 5. Yes, I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Look, a mother's day is exhausting. The to-do lists never end. You can't rely on your own strength. You're going to have to learn how to plug in to the power source and recharge your batteries before every new day. Look, if you remain connected to Christ, you will absolutely receive nourishment and you will grow deeper in your faith. And you will have the courage to face each and every day. And and you will no longer be hopeless. But you will have a hope that will endure all things. Moms, I want to encourage you this morning to start putting God first in your life. Take something off of your busy schedule and put God first. And look, here, here at GCC, we try to provide you with numerous ways so that you can put God first. One of those ways we've already talked about. Look, sign up to be a part of MOPS. Do this for yourself. Come here on Thursdays starting in September. Let some loving people watch your children or your child and go into a room filled with other moms, same stage of life, where you together can start growing in your faith. Or look, there's another way. You You can come here on Thursday nights. We have small groups that meet here at GCC. We even have free child care. Come drop your kids off. Join one of our Thursday night groups and make time for God to pour into you. Fran has an incredible class just for women. She would love for you to come on Thursday nights and be a part of that group. It's an amazing group where you can be surrounded by other women who are going to love on you and teach you how to be more like Christ. But look, whatever you choose to do, Whatever you choose to do, just make sure that you make time to be with God. So why do I wander aimlessly without hope? I put other things before God. And then number two, I put other things before myself. Moms, let me ask you this question. Try to answer it honestly. When's the last time you did something for you? Last time, I heard a laugh, see? (laughs) What's that mean, right? When is the last time you did something for you? Are you making any time for you in your busy schedule? Are you taking care of your emotional, spiritual, physical, and relational health? Or have you actually become the very last on your own to-do list? Look, if Mother's Day is the one day out of the year that you are taking care of you, then the reality is that you're going to be like those stunted shrubs in the desert like we talked about in the book of Jeremiah. You can't let the busyness of life get in the way of growing deeper in your faith. And you can't grow deeper in your faith if you're constantly putting other things before you. Here's what God says about you. 1 Corinthians 3, 16 through 17. Don't you realize that all of you together are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God lives in you? God will destroy anyone who destroys this temple. For God's temple is holy, and you are that temple. Friends, God cares deeply about how you take care of you. God has given to you an earthly body, and you are to use that for his glory. 
And look, once you come to a place in your life where you accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, we talk about this all the time, when you come to a place where you ask him into your life, then this cool thing happens. The Holy Spirit packs his suitcase full of holiness and he takes permanent residence inside of you. You see, your body is God's temple. Your body is the place where his glory and his majesty rest. So friends, you have to treat your body like a temple. Care for it. Don't put your mental, emotional, physical, and relational health on the back burner. Make time for you. If you want the roots of your faith to grow deeper, if you want to avoid the barren and desolate desert of exhaustion where you aimlessly wander without hope, if you want to avoid all of that, then you must put God first and you must make time for you. And here's the cool thing. When you do put God first and when you do make time for you, then suddenly you will see that you are able to grow deeper in your faith. So now let's talk about that. That's the positive part. Let's talk about the result of growing deeper in your faith. When I grow deeper in my faith, I live fruitfully in every season of life. Let's look at what Jeremiah 17, 7 through 8 says. But blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. They are like trees planted along a riverbank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. Now that's a pretty incredible difference than the earlier passage that we read. Look, the result of not putting God first and not caring about myself leads to aimlessly wandering in the desert without hope. But here in Jeremiah, it says that when I put all of my hope and confidence in God, I will grow deeper in my faith and I will be able to live fruitfully in every season of life. You see, that's what happens when you know God, that's what happens when you love God, when you make time for God, and when you develop a relationship with him. When you learn who he is, when you begin to hear what he says, when you trust him in the good times and the bad times, when you stay on the path for his plan and his purpose for your life, when you put all of your hope in him, fruit is produced. Friends, this, this is how life is meant to be lived. When you put all of your hope and trust in God, it says you're going to be like a tree planted next to a riverbank with roots that reach deep down into the very heart of God. Look, your tree, your body, your soul, it's no longer going to be bothered by the pains and trials of this world But you will be able to walk confidently in the storms of life as well as the parades of life because no matter what life throws at you, you will be deeply rooted and grounded in the very love of God. So what's the result of this? What's the result of fruitful living? Number one, I become more Christ-like in character. One of the best rewards of fruitful living is that you're going to become more like Christ. You're going to be more loving, more joyful, caring, peaceful, more easygoing. Look, here's the reality. When you are not firmly rooted in Christ, you become less like him. And when you become less like Christ, you're going to get angry, harsh, rude, and uptight. But when you are constantly growing in your faith, and when you are deeply rooted in Jesus Christ, you suddenly start looking and acting more like him, and the fruit of Christ begins to define you in every season of life. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love. Joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. You see, the result of fruitful living is that you will become more like Christ. You will become a better person. 
you will be a person that is now defined by love and joy and peace and patience and goodness and kindness and meekness and self-control. Moms, isn't, isn't that how you want to be remembered? My mom was the most loving person I ever knew. My mom was the most patient person I ever knew. My dad was the kindest person I ever met. My friend is the most humble person I know. Look, that's how you want to be remembered, right? That's the kind of fruit you want God to produce in your life. And look, here's the cool thing about fruitful living. When your life is now defined and consumed with love and joy and peace and patience and kindness, you become more like Jesus and now you have more to offer others. You see, you can leave a lasting legacy of Christ's likeness and you can be a mighty example to other people. You will have more to offer others. Look, your life and the fruit God bears through it can be a true example of how to bring praise and glory to God. Philippians 1.11 May you always be filled with the fruit of your salvation, the righteous character produced in your life by Jesus Christ, for this will bring much glory and praise to God. Look, when you grow deeper in your faith, you can live fruitfully in every season of life where you become more like Christ And you have more to offer others. Mothers, on this beautiful day of celebration, I want to remind you that there will definitely be challenging days ahead. There will be incredibly difficult storms that you have to weather. Here's the thing. If you are running on empty, spiritually and mentally and emotionally, and your roots are not firmly established in Jesus Christ, then what is going to happen during the storm? What's going to happen if your roots are withered and malnourished? What's going to happen if your hard days turn into hard months or hard years? Where are you going to go? What are you going to do? What is going to keep your leaves green and healthy? In years of drought. Moms, the only way you can survive the challenges of life is to grow deeper in your faith, deeper in your love, and deeper in the grace and mercy of God. And look, let me sum it all up. If you will firmly plant your roots deep within the love of Christ, then your extraordinary faith will blossom in every season and the fruit God produces will absolutely leave a lasting legacy. But in order to have a lasting legacy, in order to see God produce that fruit inside of you, You need to know Jesus. So friends, if you were here today and you don't know Jesus, if you've never asked him into your heart and into your life, I want to encourage you to pray this prayer with me. So let's bow our heads and close our eyes. If you want Jesus in your life, if you are ready to Firmly establish your roots in him. Pray this prayer. Say, Father, I don't really know what it means to be a believer and a follower of Jesus Christ. But what I've heard here today stirs my imagination that things could maybe look different in my life. And I realize I have a hungry and thirsty soul for something different. Something that, something that I've never experienced before. So I really don't know what it means, but God, I am asking that you would plant yourself in me. God, I'm sorry for trying to do this all on my own, in my own strength, in my own power. But Jesus Christ, I receive you. You invite me, and I receive you. Hey, if you prayed that prayer, 
in those very simple words, you need to rest assured that Jesus is now living inside of your heart. Father, for the rest of us who have already known you for a while, who have already put our faith in you, but maybe, maybe we're a little off path. I want to pray for us now, for those that are a little off path. Without meaning to, Father, we, we've maybe started in our, in, our, in our own directions, depending on our own skill, our own ability, our own training, our own experience, our own knowledge, our own wisdom. And God, there may be some of us here today that have walked away from you without even meaning to. And so, God, we come back to you. We bring ourselves back to you today. We place ourselves firmly by your river, those springs of living water. We want, we want to send our roots now deep into you and ask that as we do, that you would begin to produce fruit in us, the fruit of the character of Jesus Christ. And Father, we pray that our extraordinary faith would be an example to a very hungry and thirsty world. We pray this in the power of Jesus' name. Amen. 